said, my name is Omar Trawale, so an international officer. And um, this image that you're seeing at the moment, so this is the Leeds Art University in Leeds. So before we start, I just want to show you a quick video of, um, because we are a specialist university, of what you expect from us. So that it will just give you a quick 15 seconds feel of what we, we are all about before I start going into details. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, great stuff. Right, okay. So, um, so before we start, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Leeds as a city and uh, what we actually offer you know, for students anyway, because I'm sure you've heard lots of presentations from different institutions, which is fantastic, um, talking about why you have to pick the UK. So obviously I won't be telling you anything about the UK that you already haven't known already. So um, because we are based in the uh, in Leeds, um, obviously, which is part of um, Yorkshire, just to give you a brief. So Leeds is a city in the county of West Yorkshire, England. Um, it's about two hours north of London, um, via train and about two and a half hours from Edinburgh, as you can see down the map on your right hand side. So it is actually uh, the third largest city in the UK behind London and Manchester uh, with a world renowned companies and TV stations. Um, so we've got a number of TV stations within Leeds um, that broadcast all around the country. So which means opportunities for employment are vast. Uh, uh, Omar, sorry for interruption, but could you please yeah. uh, make your presentation in uh, full screen? Oh, yes, sure, sure, sure. Please. We'll do that now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, hopefully everyone can see this now. Right. Okay. Yeah, so moving on. Um, so employability is vast in terms of that, that aspect because um, because we are a specialist university, uh, we tend to um, encourage our students to actually go for opportunities within um, the music industry, uh, the, 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 the television industry, um, you know, as an artist to actually fulfill their dreams. Um, so Leeds is it's very cultural, uh, financial and commercial heart of, um, of West Yorkshire in the built up area. Um, we've got a reported population of about 780,000 um, uh, people that live in Leeds. So there's plenty to see and do, you know, lots of events, lots of festivals to attend, which is fantastic for, for, our, for our, uh, the students that we actually attract. Um, nightlife is fantastic as well. Um, look, for example, there's lots of um, nightclubs, lots of bars, lots of restaurants, cinemas, etc. And it's situated in the heart of Yorkshire. So yeah, you know, you're only a short bus ride distance away from some of the most stunning scenery um, within the UK. So, you know, Leeds was actually named um, uh, the UK's best student city, you know, by the independent because of its friendliness is diverse and uh, it's a growing city as well. So just because of that, you know, we normally have over 125,000 students that come through Leeds because we've got a number of universities within Leeds. So it makes it more vibrant for them. So Leeds is also famed for its industrial past, so it has much to offer the contemporary art world of what we do, actually. So it is very vibrant, uh, with a young student population. Um, we've also got an international airport, which is not far from us, uh, which is the Leeds uh, Bradford Airport, which makes commuting for EU students a lot easier. Um, even Turkish, well, Turkish students, um, Eastern European students, um, you know, it makes commit a lot easier because students can travel to, to, for example, France, Germany within a couple of hours, Spain, 
they're there or students can go home frequently because the commute is so simple and easy um you know so it, it's, it's a very easy destination for students um we've also got some examples of galleries that we've got in leeds to attract more of our students really we've got the henry moore institution so henry moore institution is is, is a massive gallery um the owner uh, well the person that's been named after the gallery is one of our alumni actually he, you know he actually studied with uh, with us um did the did their foundation in Wales. so he was born and bred in yorkshire and he's one of the most reverse sculptures of all time so he's actually left his legacy all around the world really um, um his iconic bronze statues are all over uh, we've got something called the west yorkshire uh, west yorkshire sculpture park in which you have all his work in which most of our students tend to go and visit to get inspiration uh, from some of these iconic works that he does um, to use as, as their own personal project. His work tends to go all the way back to Hong Kong as well, um, in the Central District. Some of his work is showcased there. We've got the Tedley Art Gallery, um, which is also a 20th century art deco building. Um, it's actually famous for its um, uh, massive high ceilings and streaming lights, so students tend to go there as well. Not just our students, but you get students from um, all over the world, students from London um, that come to actually visit these sort of galleries. We've also got the Stanley Audrey uh, Gallery. Uh, this is a, a showcase of a mixture of contemporary art. So what this gallery does is it takes most of our students walk and display it in their own galleries so that the general public can have a look. So this gives our students a lot more confidence in the work that they're doing because people tend to come and review the work. Sometimes it goes as far back as people wanting to have those sort of works in their homes in which the students can charge them a fee to actually do that work for them. So it helps them to build up their confidence in entrepreneurship, basically. Um, we've also got the Leeds Art Gallery. Um, this is actually the undisputed home of contemporary art in the region. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, uh, the building is one of the most recognizable in the city. Uh, it's got its massive Victorian clock tower. Um, you know, it's historic and skyline. So the museum also displays work from award, uh, uh, award-winning artists as well. And sometimes we've got our, our main artists, students that are studying can actually take their work there to get in, inspiration on that as well. Um, so that's just to give you a bit of foundation about what Leeds is. Um, so, you know, um, the other thing that I'll mention as well here, which I'll mention later down the line, is uh, the average cost for a single student to actually live in Leeds, if you get through some of these accommodations, which I'll go through, uh, it's between 135 and 220 pound a week. And this will involve, uh, include your accommodation, you know, your, 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 your bills, um, utility bills, your internet, it's all included in that price. So this is just to give you a comparison between what we can offer and a student moving all the way to London um, to actually stay in those sort of accommodations. Um, like I said before, we've got over 120,000 students that are in Leeds. Um, so most of our accommodations on our campus is in the center of town. So that means uh, it's a walkable distance between where you live and where you're studying. So you don't have to be traveling from one bit of the city to another to come for your classes, which is good. So moving on. Um, so just to give you a picture of um, what we've been discussing, um, the picture that you're looking at at the right hand side is our Leeds Kirkgate Market, uh, which is one of the uh, biggest indoor market in Europe. So students tend to go there to get their, 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 their not just their art products um, uh, that they need to do their uh, projects, but also there's quite a lot of things to do within that market. You know, there's you know you can you can go there. There's a cinema there. There's restaurants there. There's bars there. So. I mean, the world's your oyster. And it's a, it's a market that's mixed with old and new. So it's an inspiring, you know, mix of old. And if you look at the right-hand side, that's the new deco within inside. But the body of the market itself, it's uh, it's medieval, really. The sculptures that you're seeing at the bottom left is um, the Henry Moore sculptures that I've, I've, I've just been telling you about. This is just a sample of some of them. There's tens and tens of different projects that he's done in uh, Yorkshire Sculpture Park. 
So this is the picture of our university. This is Leeds Art University, which I'll come into now. Um, this building that you're seeing is a brand new building that's been refurbished. Um, over 22 million pounds has been spent to actually make it an up-to-date, uh, fantastic, high-performance um, uh, university. And, you know, it's an art university, so it, we have to make sure that it attracts the students that are coming to study in it. So, our university. So, uh, Leeds Arts University was founded in 1846 uh, as Leeds School of Art. Um, so, we've got over 2,000 um, undergraduate and um, postgraduate students. Um, at the moment, we've got about 700 foundation students studying with us as well. So, it is the only specialist art university in the north of England. So, which means we only take the arts. And throughout the years, we have developed a vast number of creative professionals, for example, fashion designers, you know, filmmakers, etc. So you will be submerged into a creative collaborative environment where everything seems possible if you're studying at Leeds Art. Um, so as a student, you'll get to know, you, you know, you'll get the opportunity to work with students across all our courses, basically. So if you're studying fashion design, it doesn't mean that that's, that's the only thing that you're going to concentrate on. It's it's diverse. We, we interact you with animation students, illustration students, so you get to feel um, new challenges all the time. So collaborating with exciting projects, you know, which enhance your practice and develop your creative connections. So as an institution, you know, we're very small, uh, very friendly and supportive. And that's why, you know, we pride ourselves on the support we give to every single student. So a student is not a number for us. It's an actually, you know, an absolute student. So every student we have an open door policy in which they can just come in and have a chat of anything that's going wrong. It, it doesn't matter if it's academics, it doesn't matter if it's finances, their private life, we're there to support, to help. So you will get to also know your professors on a personal level. Um, like I said, that with the open door policy means that there's help whenever you need it. So we believe that this uh, unique approach is why, you know, we were ranked number one for student support by Wasca Awards it last year, which is in 2020. So we're very proud of that because all of our, well, more, well over 99% of our students voted that the support that they received was immense. So we won the award for it. Um, so we're very proud of this. So we also recently received an 87% satisfaction rating in the latest national um, student survey, which is the highest ranking for any specialist university. So that's something that we're also proud of as well. So moving on to the courses um, that we do offer, which is more intriguing really for, for upcoming students. So the first thing that I'll discuss is the foundation programs that we do. So our foundation diploma is a one year intensive, well-respected course that will prepare you for undergraduate uh, level study by enhancing your practice and existing, um, um, assisting you to prepare a portfolio uh, of examples of work that will support your university application. So this is not mandatory, uh, but it's vital um, to your understanding of art and design. So this is mainly for people that want to get into art, but want to know a little bit more about it before getting a degree. So a foundation is there for you as a mandatory to, to start off with. So in the first uh, part of the foundation diploma, obviously, um, you will develop your understanding of a wide range of, obviously, artistic languages that you have to know. Um, so which means that it allows you to explore the different subject areas. Then you will select one of four specialist pathways to focus on, you know, depending on your skills, your interests and career aspirations anyway. So this is actually taught on in a Victorian Venon uh, Street building, which I'll show you the picture of shortly. It's a well-known course in the UK. Um, so students get to try loads of different artistic areas, like I said. And this is actually broken down into three semesters so the second semester specialized into one of four so moving on so those semesters that i'm talking about uh, the first one uh, that you will learn one of the pathways is the graphic communication so whilst you're doing this graphic communication within foundation you will study a bit of um, graphic design comic and concept art illustration animation uh, creative advertising photography and film making so if you tend to choose one of these, so that means that once you've completed your foundation, you will choose one of these pathways to go into whilst you're doing graphic communication. If you don't fancy that, you can try fine art, 
in which within that you'll be doing some drawings, some paintings, some printmaking, some sculptures, uh, installation and performance. So if you think that that's, that's definitely you, then fine art is definitely your feature. Um, fashion and textile, which is very, very popular. Um, that means that within the foundation, you'll be doing fashion or costume designs, fashion branding or textile designs. That means that your career is going towards fashion design, basically, um, you know, uh, fashion and textile. 3D is another one in which you'll be doing some product design, some interior designs and theater stuff. So that's another one for, you know, architectural people, designing you know, animations, wall building. Um, it's another one. So moving on, like I said before, uh, this is the Venom Street building. So if you're a foundation student, this is where you'll be based. It's a fantastic building, uh, um, historical building, but inside is all modernized as well for the students to utilize. So moving on to uh, some of the exciting courses that we do offer on the undergraduate courses. So within the undergraduate courses, we have got 15 exciting courses. So we've got some big courses and we've got some that we call niche courses, which are more uh, smaller courses. So some of the big courses, I won't go through all of them because of uh, time restrictions, but um, I'll just pick some to just talk about. But if you do, if you are interested in any of these, you can either contact um, us to the international office email, which I'll give you after the presentation, or you can just basically go to our website and then um, on the undergraduate courses, all the courses are listed there. So any course that you go to, it will give you all the course descriptions, the contents of the course, the modules, uh, how many years, what you do every year, uh, entry requirements of the course. And also we've got something called a chat to students in which uh, nearly most of our students are on our website in which they are ready to talk to you about the experiences of that particular course. They'll tell you everything that you need to know about expectations and, you know, what makes them enjoy the course, the facilities that, they, that they're working on on the course as well. So it's all transparent. It's all there on the website. So the, the one that I'll go through the first is the fine art. Okay, we've got courses from animation. Um, all the way to visual communication, but fine art is one of our most popular courses. It's absolutely full of every year. So this is a challenging and engaging course at this house within specialist studios. So the studio is fantastic. It's one of the most uh, top of the ring sort of uh, facilities I've ever seen on, on, on a fine art basis. So each led by experienced teams of artists. So you will engage with a range of strategies uh, to support the development of your studio practice as well. Another big course that I'll mention is grand design, uh, graphic design, sorry. So this course will encourage you to develop your own voice, basically your opinions, you know, individual understanding of graphic design. So you will build the discipline and skills you'll need to succeed in a professional environment, such as peer presentations, you know, group feedbacks, collaborative projects. So graphic design as well is one of our big, big courses. Um, another one that I'll mention is visual communication. The reason why I'll mention it is because it's a very diverse course. So the reason why it's diverse is um, it incorporates modules from other courses. So all the courses that you're seeing at the top here, um, there's some modules that are incorporated with visual communication. So you will learn about every single course from animation all the way to photographic. Um, so these are the undergraduate ones that we offer. Moving on to the postgraduate courses that we offer as well, we offer um, currently 11 exciting postgraduate ones from MA Animation all the way to Digital Fashion. Um, so with these as well, all the information are on our website. And uh, if you don't want to go to the website, you could contact the international team, which is myself and my team, actually. And we're happy to, to go through every single detail that you need to know about the course itself. We also have a chat to students. Uh, within the website that you can speak to current students that are actually doing the course to give you brief descriptions of um, uh, the advantages of the course, the facilities, you know, what to look out for, um, hints and tips, basically. So some of the big ones that I'll mention as well is um, MA Wall Building, which is um, at the bottom, third bottom. Um, so you will design a well-researched and richly uh, detailed wall in a collaborative and um, interdisciplinary environment that integrates imagination and imagine technologies. So basically, when you're doing world building, um, you will get to learn how to design characters from animations, you know, all the way to graphic design as well. So um, it's a very competitive course 
and very rewarding as a career as well. The next one I'll mention is illustration, which is one of my favorite, um, because um, you know you learn skills to make you a top artist once you finish. So the course is supported by the team with diverse research and practical interests, you know, from the fields of illustrations and its border visual cultures. Um, so the course methodology and um, centers around the ideas of observing, you know, questioning, responding to the wall, seeking out ideas. So people that that tend to learn this course are thinkers, basically. You're always thinking on your feet outside the box. That's what illustration is all about, basically. So if you want further information, like I said, about the individual courses, please visit the website or you contact us and we'll be happy to go through every single one of them. Um, going, moving on towards facilities. Uh, with the facilities, like I said before, so Leeds Arts University, we've actually invested over 22 million pounds in a huge refurbishment, you know, which was completed in 2019. So students will be, we obviously will not be held back by the limitations of facilities or equipment. So we pride ourselves to our state of the art resources and libraries. Um, we have actually won um, the What You Student Choice Award for best facilities three times in six years. So the last one being in 2019. And um, we actually came second um, the rest of the years as well, which is in uh, last year we came second, 2018 we came second and 2017 as well. So as a student, you will have access to our fabulous state-of-the-art resources, obviously free of charge because, you know, you are part of the school. So these include specialist workshops, you know, uh, computer suits, you know, the libraries, the print areas, the 3D animation studios, the fashion studios, the photographic studios, filmmaking uh, studios. And we've also got a 230 seat music auditorium for our music students as well, which is a very popular course as well. So we've also got a state-of-the-art public exhibition gallery and all these facilities are equipped to industry standard. So the public exhibition gallery is designed like a proper professional international gallery in which students will soak us all their work uh, for the general public to come and have a look, uh, which is absolutely brilliant. So um, this is just, you know, an example of the investments that we've done for the students to get a fantastic experience. Um, Obviously, um, we are in hard times to do with the COVID-19, but normally we invite students to come and have a look for themselves rather than doing it virtually. We'll invite agents, we'll invite students, students come with their parents from abroad, um, in-house. Um, we'll come and give them a fantastic tour throughout the campus, through all the facilities. Even if um, there's a specific subjects that you're not interested about, we will still show you those facilities so that you can have a feel of um, um, uh, the acceptance that we actually create in for you, the diversity um, of the facilities. So um, we are still hopeful that by the end of this year or by September when students have started, um, we can start inviting um, applicants to come and have a look at these facilities. So just to give you a, you know, just just a brief picture of some of these facilities, like what you're looking at now is our filmmaking studio, um, students preparing you know, for a for a for a short film that they that they're creating. These are the 3D prototype um, animation studios that we've got. Also, um, <clears throat> this is the library. <laughs> um, this is just a fraction, a, a little picture of the library that we actually have. Um, we've got approximately over sixty thousand books, um, and within them, we've got over one hundred and seventy uh, national and international magazine subscriptions within the library. We've got state-of-the-art um, computers um, for students to utilize, to use, students to even borrow laptops and take it back for their own projects. Um, so just to make life a lot easier for them. Um, this library has won multiple of awards. Um, the building itself, the design of it, the students were actually involved in the design. Um, the high ceiling, um, high uh, window sills. You can see the picturesque of the main city center as well. So. It's something that um, the students are actually proud of as well. So moving on to accommodation in which students want to know about, um, we've got three different accommodations that we offer. Uh, I'm just giving you one sample of them. Uh, this is the HEPO Lodge. Uh, we've got another two, one called the Mills and one called the Car Mills as well. So they're all, uh, this HEPO Lodge one is run by the union students. So it's actually owned and operated by union students. Um, the premium range 
force en suite is 152 pounds 39 um, this is per week so uh, approximately 600 pound per month uh, it's a 44 week contract that students normally take uh, it's actually guaranteed for international students from the 1st of July so any international students that's coming to uh, study with us you are guaranteed accommodation no matter what because we prioritize you first um, before anyone else because obviously you come in to a, to a foreign country you don't know anyone so we have to make sure that you are comfortable where you are um, so if you choose to stay with us we are guaranteeing your accommodation obviously as an open policy as well it's your choice if you don't want to stay on our accommodations we are happy for you to look anywhere else that you want to study but even if you do change your mind we will support you to come back and stay with us so we stand at moving away from home to live in uh, student accommodation is almost as important as finding the place to live so the benefits of staying with us is you know you'll be living with other creative students from Leeds Arts University so that means every single neighbor that you'll have will be a student of ours and they will be either be in your course or another course you can have a conversation you can have something in common so you'll be living in shared flats so you will get to know more students from across courses so our accommodation is well located um, so that you can be sure you are getting the most out of leads from when you first arrive so that means everything is in the city center you don't have to waste money on traveling around um, you can walk to shops restaurants nightlife i mean anywhere that you want we ensure that the accommodation meets the highest standard possible so that means that the picture that you're seeing you have your room you have your own suite um, all this is included in your weekly payment you'll have your internet access which is fiber optic so that means there's no delaying um, so you will not have anything that will put you back in terms of your studies so moving forward so with all the accommodation that I've mentioned as well if you want further details just let us know or go on our website we've got a special page for our accommodation information in which you can go through email the accommodation team which is the admissions home team that actually deals with them if you're not getting any joy which we never have because um, they always respond to you very quickly and support your application um, you can come to us and we can then help you with the application as well so moving on to the tuition fees which every student want to know as well so for 2021 2022 um, so the foundation diploma fees are 11,700 as you can see um, that we do offer so it's a competitive rate if you compare that price to the foundation programs in other universities which are not in lead specialist universities that are nearer to London it's a lot more um, but the modules are exactly the same uh, you know we tend to pride ourselves as if we have the highest quality as well uh, BA honors which is the undergraduate courses um, they are all 15,800 per year um, also the only exception is our music so so that's the beamers a popular music course which is the only one that's 16900 because of the intensity of the course uh, postgraduate all our postgraduate courses are 15800 um to 17000 um uh, as well respectively the only courses that are more is the MA fine art and MA creative writing um, they're a bit more complex so they are 17000 for those um I'll come through the uh, fees as well which is the scholarship so you know we actually enjoy um leads actually enjoy a much um, lower cost of living than london and the south of england obviously so our international tuition fees are designed to offer value for money um so with all these offers that i'm giving you as well we do offer a two percent early payment discount if full payments are made before august so if you signed up you got an unconditional offer you definitely come into us if let's say your first payment is paid before august we will give you a two uh, two percent discount on that payment as well um obviously we went through the the offer so the only thing that i'll also mention is the scholarships so with the scholarships it's, it's quite exciting really so with the undergraduate scholarships uh, we've got seven available which is at two thousand pounds per scholarship um you can apply for these scholarships at the moment for students that are coming for september entry the deadline for the scholarships is the 14th of may which is in a few weeks time um we've also got a scholarship for the postgraduate courses which is um uh, five available for three thousand pounds and um the deadline for those are the 11th of june for september entry 
So students must be made an offer to apply for a scholarship. So students can apply for the scholarships with the link that I've actually got there as well, which is also on our website. We've also got something called the International Progression Awards. So the International Progression Awards um, is for students from outside the UK, obviously. So fee-paying students directly progressing from a Leeds Arts University for the dedication course to a Leeds to you know a Leeds Arts University undergraduate degree course or from a Leeds Arts University undergraduate course to a postgraduate course uh, will qualify you for a reduction of one thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds. Um, yearly on your course. So that means if you do your foundation with us, you get 1750. Um, that will be deducted every year on your undergraduate for three years. Or if you don't an undergraduate going towards post, we will deduct 1750 from your postgraduate tuition fee, which is quite exciting. So no application is necessary for this. This is automatic uh, because you're on the system. So the International Progress and Awards is awarded automatically. So student in receipt of the International Progress and Awards obviously might not be eligible to actually apply for the vice chancellor's international uh, scholarships that i just mentioned here for you um so um moving on from that one so um entry requirements which is also very very important um so what i did was i tried to put it on the presentation just to give you a brief summary of what we actually asked for especially for Turkish students coming to. Um, so for the foundation programs, um, you can either have an A-levels uh, with equivalence to at least 72 UCAS tariff points, uh, grades, uh, triple D um, on our website. All this information is there as well. Or you can have an IB, which is International Baccalaureate, which is um, at least two higher levels or one standard level, uh, grade four uh, in each, basically. Um, or you can have a successful completion of the Anadolu, which is um, the Anatolian high school diploma. Um, that will qualify you straight away to actually get into the foundation program. Within the foundation program as well, um, we, we will also require an English um, um, certification, which is the IELTS for UKVI. Right, this is not something that the school, well, our institution put in place. This is something that the UK government, the Home Office, have put in place for any foundation program students coming into the UK will have to do. So uh, if you're doing this IELTS for UK VI, you have to have an overall 5.0 with no components less than 4.5 on all the relevant subjects, which is the reading, writing, etc. So for UK VI, is the only test accepted by the UK visa and immigration for entry to further education courses so no matter what as a foundation diploma student applying you have to have this because otherwise it will dampen your chances of getting the student visa but it won't get to that stage because we will let you know that it has to be done for your visa application so it's a bit different when you're applying for an undergraduate which you can see at the bottom so for undergraduate we require three A levels which is BBC or equivalent to at least 112 UCAS study points um, because of the courses that we offer uh, the high level courses that's why we actually asking for uh, at least uh, an average of 112 UCAS points um, a, a Turkish uh, student could also have an IB diploma with at least 26 points including high level visual arts once you've got this you automatically qualify for any of our undergraduate courses that you're applying for um, you can also have a successful completion of your Anatolian high school diploma, which is also sufficient as long as you've got an overall average of 80%. We are happy to give you an offer because uh, if you look at UCAS um, or, um, or, or NARIC, basically um, it's called ECLIS now, basically, but that's equivalent to our A levels, which is brilliant. If you have studied the LISA uh, diplomacy qualification, you'll be considered for direct entry to undergraduate studies as well. Um, evidence of um, your English language ability um, is also required, so which means that this one doesn't have to be a UK VI one. It, can, it could be an academic standard um, IELTS, at least 5.5 in average with no components below 5.5. If you don't want to do IELTS, there are other English language um, compositions that we actually accept, which is on our website, for example, TOEFL. Uh, persons um, we do accept any of these but also know that if you do the IB diploma if English literature is part of it 
you are not necessarily um, uh, evolved to do IELTS as well, because that will qualify you uh, for your English language ability. So moving on from that for postgraduate as well. So an undergraduate um, UK honours degree is sufficient or an international equivalent in a subject related to your proposed course. So you can have another degree from another institution. It doesn't necessarily have to be a UK degree. Uh, as long as it's equivalent to a UK degree, uh, then that degree is sufficient for us. Um, a degree equivalent postgraduate diploma is absolutely fine. Um, you are also required um, to evidence English language, another IELTS composition, uh, in which 6.0 uh, would be the average and 5.5 in every uh, component of it. Um, the link that I've just, you've just seen there uh, gives you all the different English language qualifications that we do accept. But please go on our website as well, um, because you will see a massive list of all the different English language qualifications that we can accept. Um, so if you don't want to do ours, it's not the end of the world. Um, we've got other options for you as well. But if you do need any further information with regards to this, we can have a private chat. Um, you can come back to my booth after this or uh, send us an email and then uh, we'll be happy to organize a Zoom meeting or just exchange emails with all the details anyway. Um, additional documents or ent for the entry requirements. So because we are a, a specialist arts university, uh, sometimes we tend to ask for slightly a little bit more of what ordinary universities would actually ask for. The reason why is we need a personal statement. So if you're applying for, for example, animation, we, we want you to tell us your passion about art, about animation, you know, what, what have you done, the experiences, you know, you don't have to go into depth, but we just want you to be enthusiastic about what you're going to be getting into. Um, not just that, we also require a reference so to support your application. So this could either be from an academic teacher, a tutor or a counsellor. So um, it could be, you know, from any of these is fine. One is sufficient. We also require a digital portfolio or what we call on our um, institution uh, our application images. So that means that if, if you apply for fashion design, we want to see a short portfolio from you about your work, little project that you've done. It doesn't necessarily have to be hundreds of pages. It could be five pages, it could be 10 pages, as long as it's necessary for what you're applying for. Applying for animation, illustration, fine art, world building. If you're applying for a music, uh, one of our music courses, which is slightly different, um, we will advise you on, on what sort of portfolio we're expecting. Um, if you do want more information about these portfolios as well, we are happy to support you. We can discuss it or exchange emails in which we'll give you the certain pointers. We also run seminars uh, on our institution on how to help students to get a fantastic portfolio without thinking about it that much. So we do run these sessions as well in which I'll be happy to go through. So an application can be submitted without a portfolio. So we will obviously, you know, we will send a digital request to the, to the applicant to request a portfolio. So you can apply without your portfolio then when it comes, we'll review your application and then send you an email to say, right, could you now have your portfolio? So you don't have to actually wait until your portfolio is all done and sending it to us. So there's no deadline to submit these portfolios as well. And everything is in hand. Um, we will always remind you the reason why sometimes we, we want it a little bit quicker is so that we can go through it, you know, send it to the course leader. Uh, they review it, give you a comment about it, make you an offer and then help you through your um, uh, other visa application processes so that you know, you'll know you be ready enough to either come to Leeds early enough to know the city a little bit before your course starts. Um, if that's not the case, obviously we will support you either way. So we aim to provide applicants with the outcome of their applications via email within 10 working days of receiving their portfolio. Normally it's a lot quicker than that, but obviously we've just put that there as a leeway to just let you know that once the application is received, we're working on it straight away. Most of the time, within five days, we get back to you anyway. But uh, due to the demand of applications that we're receiving recently, uh, we have to stretch it a little bit to give everyone more time uh, to make sure that we get it right. Moving on, so how to apply. Um, obviously, um, all this information, again, is on our website. So directly on, on online, at, uh, the website there is um, um, apply entry requirements. So. If you go on our website, you choose the course that you want to do, it will prompt you to go to, to, to apply. And then that will give you 
all the bullet point interesting uh, information that you require on how to apply. If that's um, not working out for you, just let us know. You know, we are happy to help uh, set you up, um, get you a, um, a reference number and everything else that you require. General information and education history is normally required. So that means when you're applying, it will ask you the normal questions that any other university within the country would ask you, obviously your name, uh, your address history, your education history, and then it moves on to your personal statements. With your personal statements, you know, it's entirely up to you. 500 words or less is sufficient. Some students want to go a lot further. You know, we will not discourage you if you want to give us a 1,000 words. It's entirely up to you. But the smaller, the better, because, you know, you're just expressing yourself. You know, we will get to know you a lot more once you start your course, because, you know, everyone else will see you every day. We'll get to know who you are. So it's entirely up to you. If you want to express yourself, fine. But as long as it's 500 words or less, that's, that's absolutely fine. Any academic transcripts um, is fine as well, because obviously we will need that um, just to make sure that um, we are going through the entry requirements and it's relevant to go through. Um, so just like any other institutions, we have to see these original transcripts. English language qualifications, if applicable. So if it's applicable, then you have to provide English language um, evidence, either be IELTS or anything else, as long as it's sufficient. Digital portfolio, application image, like I said, is vital because every course that we offer, you have to submit a portfolio, but we will help you to get those portfolios in an immaculate state. UCAS, so this is for the undergraduate students. Uh, they can actually apply to five UK courses with one application. So that means once you're in the UCAS site, you know, you're not limited just to apply to Leeds Arts University. You can apply to multiple, uh, a maximum of five. And then at the end, you choose the one that you think is more sufficient for you. Moving on, I uh, just wanted to give you a brief um, summary about some of our alumni, uh, you know, famous people that have actually studied with us um, uh, that are still connected to the university. The first one is Barbara Hepworth. So an artist and sculpture, you know, one of the few female artists of her generation to gain prominence. Uh, she was from the Yorkshire area as well, so she's a famous artist. Her work is still here. We've got a gallery name after her in Leeds. Uh, Damien Hurst, uh, most prominent member of the Young British Artists and one of the highest earning artists in the world. So he's the richest artist in the world. He's, his works are selling for hundreds of thousands of pounds, some even a million. Um, you know, he, he studied with us as well. So this is what I, I was talking about, employability, in which students, um, over 96% of our students end up either setting up their own business in terms of setting up galleries or working for companies as consultants in terms of graphic design or, you know, some are moving on to do filmmaking, writing scripts. At the moment, we've got an alumni that's working with Netflix and part of a few series that we're very proud of. Um, for example, Reassure that you're looking at now, you know, she's a socialist, uh, social activist and the first Indian to receive the UNICEF Global uh, Goals Award in 2017. She did her degree with us and um, she's now got a, a studio in, in, in India as well. So, you know, these are just some examples. We've got tens of these um, alumni that are that we're very proud of. And some do come back to the university and give a give a seminar to, to the students and tell them about their life and their experience while studying with us. So we want all our students to have that same effect on others in the future. So going on to COVID, which um, obviously we have to discuss, you know, um, the teaching, well, our teaching is still happening face to face in some aspect because the government has now allowed it. You know, we also using a blended approach, you know, since September, obviously, because we are an arts based university, you know, most of our courses are, uh, are practical, really, you have to be on hand to do it. So, um, you know, the university have done fantastically well in supporting students to make sure that their learning is still ongoing and um, not, you know, some students are kind of um, um, suffering a little bit because they haven't seen their friends that much. And But their work is still going on. We're making sure that they're doing their modules. We're making sure that the, the theory part is going on. Even the practical part of it is going on. We're supporting them. So. Uh, a small socially distanced classes supported by online learning is still going on. Um, obviously, new incoming international students can begin their studies online. Well, they've already started that anyway. But at the moment, we are so optimistic that we are actually preparing a proper face-to-face -face, uh, learning in September. So everyone that's coming up, we hope, we're hoping that we are going to be back 
to that face-to-face -face ball, we are also preparing um, uh, to still continue with the on online aspect of it as well in case uh, the government uh, decides not to have that. But at the moment, you know, we are hopeful that it will go ahead anyway. But obviously, you know, everyone should know that um, safety of our students is our number one priority. You know, we've set up testing centers in which students go in every day to get tested. And uh, we've got protocols in which if someone tests positive and how we're going to help them, support them in terms of um, uh, getting them food, making sure that their livelihood is going on. You know, we're actually picking students up from the airport, you know, taking them home, doing their shopping for them until their quarantines are over. So we're giving them maximum support, giving them all the information that they can to support them in these difficult times. Um, our, we've got a covert site on our website, which is updated every week, depending on what the new government guidelines are. So I would also advise if you, you know, if, if you're someone that likes to know an up to date story of what COVID's like within the UK, go on our website. It will give you all the up to date information about it. Um, yeah, so that's the end of it, really. So I'll say we do have virtual open days uh, that are on demand that you can look, uh, go on, you know, watch some of these videos that we actually have uh, on our virtual open days. Um, you'll see some of our course leaders, um, lecturers talking about their various courses, uh, different modules, um, what to expect in the near future, the facilities, you know, some of the new products that they get in um, for their courses. Um, so you could go through all that and then, you know, learn a bit more about it. So it's all on demand. Just go and pick the ones that you want that's more relevant to you, what subject area, and then just, 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 have, a, just have a read. Uh, you can also attend our online open days uh, that are going on. We've got several coming up. We've got one coming up next month. Um, we've got a PG one coming up and a UG one. The PG one is on the 15th of May. Uh, you can go and book yourself in and listen to the various um, departments talking about the university, from accommodation to our international team, which is us, to the different courses, talking about the different modules as well. So it's all there, or you can email the international team. We can organize a Zoom call, a private one-to-one -one session in which we can go through your options, you know, because at the moment I can understand that there are certain students that have just finished in their high schools. They have an idea of what they want to do, but they don't know much about um, the courses or, you know, how to make up their minds. We can help with that. Have a sit down of a Zoom call. You can invite your parents. We can have a a group session discussion will tell you everything that you need to know just to help you even if you you know you're someone that's not looking to come to us we are still there to actually give you that advice and then you can take it with you and choose any institution that you want to utilize to so um now obviously i'll finish up shortly and then um it will be open to questions but um you are feel free to actually email me on omar which is o-m-a-r dot trawale t-r-a-w-a-l-l-y at leads hyphen art dot ac dot uk or you can email our international office which is the international at leads dot hyphen dot ac dot uk and we are happy to actually support um in any aspect um of your you know future that you wish us to be part of really um yeah so um just stop the sharing there and then just say that um you know we are now open for uh, for questions really so if any one of you have any questions at all um you know we could um we could discuss or you can come to the booth and then um we can have a uh we can have a discussion of the, the various subject areas that we have if you haven't got the time today obviously uh we can do it tomorrow as well we're here um you know, same time again, um, you know, just to support you anyway. But yeah, if there's anything that I've mentioned that is not very clear to you or does it make sense, just come back to me and um, we have to actually send you the documentations uh, to get it in writing to, to support you. But yeah, any questions at all, um, I'm happy to start supporting anyway. But uh, also, I just want to say thank you to uh, SI UK for for setting up this event anyway, because it's quite useful and helpful for, for, for students and for inviting all of us, basically, not just me, but all the institutions from the UK to, to, to support Turkish students. So thank you.